This is a GCSE video about states of matter. Don't forget to visit my website, Love at Physics, for lots of exam questions, or subscribe to this if you like it and you want to see more. There are three common states of matter that we know about. Solid, liquid, and gas. Now we have experience of these things on a day-to-day -day basis. Liquid we drink every day is water, gas we breathe every day, and solids we are made of and we, we stand on. Um, however, um, sometimes things can change between these three things, and the changes, the phase changes, these, these things we call phases. So the phase changes or the state changes have special names. So when something goes from a solid to a liquid, you've seen this happen when an ice cube or an ice cream comes out of the freezer, that's called melting. And a liquid to a gas is called evaporating. When a gas turns back into a liquid, you see that when you breathe on a cold window, that's called condensing. And when a liquid goes into a solid, again, when you put that water back in the freezer, that's called freezing. Now, evaporating could also be called boiling, and there's a slight difference between those two. Evaporating happens only at the surface of the liquid, only the very top layer evaporates, but boiling happens all the way through the liquid. You've seen when something's boiling, the bubbles come from the bottom. Um, also, boiling only happens at the boiling point, which is for water, 100 degrees. You get evaporation. If I left a cup of water out here for a few days, it would evaporate. It would never boil, it would never get to 100 degrees, but it would slowly evaporate. So there's a, a couple of differences between those two. Now, to understand a little bit more about these three things, we need to look at what particles look like in these three states. The particles in a solid are closely packed and ordered, and they do not move around. They vibrate a little bit, like this, because they've got some heat energy. You don't get a solid that is completely still, they vibrate a little bit, but they stay in a pattern and they stay in an ordered structure. That's a solid. Now, liquid, the particles are still very close together, but the particles in a liquid can move around past each other, which is why we can pour out a liquid. If we have a larger example here, we can pour out a liquid because the particles can move past each other like this. We can pour it back in. So if the particles can move past each other, they're still very close together, but they can move past each other, and so you can pour a liquid, and it changes shape to fill the shape of the container that you put it in. Now, a gas also changes shape to fill the container that you put it in, but a gas has particles that are very far apart. As you can see here, there's only a few particles in the same amount of space as our solids and liquids. What that means is that solids and liquids are more dense and therefore heavier, which is why solids and liquids sink to the bottom of gas. If you have some water, for example, if you have a liquid, it always falls down in the gas because it's heavier, it's more dense. So solids and liquids, the particles are closer together, gases, the particles are further apart. And obviously gases have more energy, they need to be hotter. You need to give water energy to boil it into steam, and you need to give ice energy to melt it. So the gas has more energy than the liquid, liquid has more energy than the solid. Now what's interesting about that is that when you heat something up, you're giving the particles more energy. So the particles start to vibrate more. Now, if you do that to a solid, the particles vibrating more, they're going to hit into each other. Let's just focus on our solid at this stage. So if the particles start to vibrate more, they're going to bash into each other more or collide. Collide is what we use to say the particles are crashing into each other. And if the particles are colliding more, and we can see what happens here. If the particles collide more, they start to move slightly further apart from each other. Now, they don't start to move past each other unless you melt it, but they do start to move slightly further apart. 
And as you can see, what's happened to our solid is it's expanded. Now this is called thermal expansion. Thermal just means anything to do with heat and expansion means it's getting bigger. Now, thermal expansion happens with everything. It happens with solids. If you heat up a solid, it will get slightly bigger. It's hard to notice with your eye, but it, things do get bigger when they are hotter. Liquids also get bigger when they are hotter. They expand. Gases do as well, and that is the one that you might have been able to notice with your eyes. If you've ever seen something like a hot air balloon or something, as the air heats up, it gradually gets bigger. And also, if you have a balloon and you heat it up, if you put a, a, a balloon, you could try this at home, if you blow up a balloon, you pop one of the, you blow up two balloons, put one in hot water and one in cold water, you'll see that the one in hot water ends up slightly bigger and the one in cold water ends up slightly smaller. That's because all these particles have more energy, so they're colliding with each other and they're spreading out. And that happens in solids, liquids and gases. Now we have a equation to describe that. And as you know from when you blow up a balloon, if you blow up a balloon, the volume increases. Now, if you blow up a balloon and the volume could not increase, for example, when you inflate a car tire or a bike tire, the volume doesn't increase, but the pressure increases. Those particles are trying to expand and they're hitting the walls of the container much faster and they're trying to escape and they're trying to get out, but they can't get out of the tire. So either the volume increases or the pressure increases. So pressure times volume is always constant at a constant temperature. So the, if the pressure increases, the volume decreases. Or if the volume increases, the pressure decreases. So at the same temperature, at a constant temperature, the pressure times the volume is always a, the same number. So if you double the pressure, then you halve the volume at the same temperature. Or if you double the volume, then you halve the pressure. Now you can imagine that in, with the example of a balloon again. If you blow up a balloon and tie it, and then if you imagine squeezing it to half the volume, you're increasing the pressure inside. You're going to increase the force that the um, that the balloon is pushing out onto your hands. It's going to get harder and harder and harder. The smaller the volume, the higher the pressure. And the same would work the other way around. If you stretched it out, it would be harder and harder to stretch out because the pressure would be lower and lower on the inside. So if you increase pressure, you decrease volume and the other way around. <laughs>